name is Ranger Amanda and I am a park ranger here at Catoctin Mountain Park. And thank you for joining me for Catoctin's Critters. Today we're going to go around and we're going to see some of the signs of fall because it's that time of year where it's starting to look really beautiful out there. And that changing landscape is looking really nice and colorful. In my hand I have yellow leaves. And if you observe carefully, you'll also find red leaves. And I would be on the lookout for orange leaves and purple leaves and lime green leaves. And those are all changing and it's going to make those views of our mountain extra beautiful. Now, the leaves aren't the only thing that's changing. The weather is cooling off. You're going to start to need a jacket. and the daylight is getting shorter. So these changes are causing our animals to start changing their behaviors too. So we're going to explore what they're doing to get ready for winter because animals can do different things in the winter. Some animals are getting ready to fly away and they're going on this long journey called migration and they're going to spend their winter someplace warmer. And some animals are getting ready to sleep and they're getting to, ready to sleep a very special kind of sleep called hibernation. And so when they wake up, it will be warm here again. And some animals, they are going to stay active and they are going to stay here for the winter. So they need to prepare for a winter here in Maryland. So let's go ahead and explore some of the animals that you might come across when you're here in the fall. Now it's important to note that when we go out and we explore, we are going into the animal's home. And just like when you go into a friend's home or another family member's home, we want to show them respect and kindness. So when you come into the forest, remember you're in an animal's home, and you can show them respect and kindness by keeping a safe distance from them. Observing with your eyes so we don't want to harass our animals. We also don't want to feed our animals. These are wild animals and they should be able to find their food out in the wild. And the other thing is we do not want to leave our parks and our forests, our natural areas. We don't want to leave them a mess. So anything you bring in, snacks, wrappers, water bottles, extra clothes, we want to make sure that we take those with us when we leave the park. So that way the park is there for you to enjoy if you decide to come back and for others to enjoy as well. We want everybody to be able to enjoy our parks as beautiful and natural as they are. So, oh, looks over there. I think I see my first Catoctin critter. So here in Catoctin Mountain Park, we have a few snake species. And the two that I see here are non-venomous. And we have a very small snake here called the ringneck snake. Now this snake is all black and it's gonna have a yellow ring on the back of its neck. So its name is really easy to remember, the ringneck snake. And this snake is thin and it's small its entire life. In fact, it only grows about one foot. That's a pretty small adult. So they like to eat things like spiders and insects and that's what they're going to eat their whole life. And I appreciate any animal that eats spiders and insects. Now, the next snake that I have over here is our eastern rat snake. Now this snake is much bigger than my other friend, even as a baby. And in fact, it is baby snake season because our baby snakes, they're born around mid-September. And so they're going to be out exploring the world. They're curious. And baby snakes are often very, very beautiful. So the eastern rat snake is a very beautiful baby snake. In fact, it has a beautiful pattern on it. It's going to be light gray with 
dark black splotches on it and it's going to be shiny and very very beautiful now it does not keep that pattern as a grown-up as it grows that pattern is going to fade it's going to darken and it's eventually going to fade away and be all black just like my snake here and these guys i also appreciate them because they eat a lot of rodents and they are very good hunters and they don't even have any arms and legs to hunt with so that's pretty amazing that they eat those rodents and so if i see them if i see these snakes like i'm looking at them right now right now ranger amanda is a little bit too close to them if i saw these snakes in the wild i would want to step back and give them more room that way they can decide where they want to go and if i come across a snake that is basking on a log just like these guys are basking on a rock i want to give them plenty of space and i want to observe with my eyes only and that's what a good junior ranger would do so we're going to leave these guys to enjoy the sun of the fall and we're going to explore the forest a little bit closer. Now there's a lot of trees in the forest and there's a special animal that helps plant those trees. In fact, this animal is our biggest tree planter. And can you guess what animal that might be? Hmm, well, might be the blue jay. So our blue jay is our biggest tree planter and that's because they are staying active in the winter. And in order to survive the winter, they're gonna need to start putting away food. In fact, they're gonna start putting away a lot of acorns. And these food storages that they make, they're called caches. And they're gonna create these caches full of acorns and other seeds all throughout the forest and the reason that they're going to spread them out is because animals like to play finders keepers so if another animal finds your food stash or if you find another animal's food stash you're going to eat it all up so they prevent that from happening from all their food disappearing by spreading it out throughout the forest floor and they'll visit them as the winters progress to eat their food out of their storage cache and sometimes, well, they don't visit all of them. Sometimes they forget about all the caches they created and the acorns that they put in the ground sprout. Yes, these are seeds and they will sprout into a baby tree and eventually they will grow up and become these big trees that we see all around us. Now you might be thinking, well, Ranger Amanda, what about the squirrel? I know for a fact that squirrels like acorns. And I also know that they put them in the ground. So you're telling me that squirrels don't plant trees? Actually, yes, I am. They actually really don't plant trees. And the reason for that is because they do an important step before they bury their acorns. See the very tip of this acorn that's the part that is going to sprout and turn into a baby tree now before the squirrels put them away they're going to bite off that tip and then they're going to put them in the ground and because they've bitten off that tip that tip that is going to sprout into a tree well if it's not there it can't sprout and that is why they're not the best tree planters but it does save them from coming back to visit their cache and seeing a baby tree there. So it gives them food all winter long. Now, speaking of squirrels, I think we're gonna try and find one. <gasps> oh, boys and girls, come with me. I think I see a squirrel in a tree, and this is one of our secret squirrel residents. And it'll be really hard to find this one when you're here. They are very secretive. <gasps> what is that? It's a flying squirrel. Oh my goodness. I know you guys probably see gray tree squirrels all over the place, but a flying squirrel is a super treat to see here at Katahdin Mountain Park. 
So let's go ahead and get our guy down. There he is. And these flying squirrels are really tiny. In fact, they're probably about half the size of my stuffed animal friend here. But they do have big eyes to help them see at nighttime. Now these guys are called flying squirrels, but really they're gliding squirrels. And so on my puppy here, you can see they have a special skin that goes from their, from their ankle to their wrist. And so when they spread out, when they jump from those trees and they spread out, they're able to glide through the forest, glide through the air. And they have a flat tail. And so when they're gliding, they can kind of help steer where they're going to go because they can't flap. So they need a way to steer to reach that tree that they want to land on. And so these guys are nocturnal, which means they only come out at night. And that's okay if we don't, aren't able to see them during the day, but you might be able to, to see where they sleep during the day. So now that the leaves are falling off the trees, you can peek up and see the branches and you might be able to see a squirrel's nest. And those squirrel's nests are gonna look like a bunch of leaves that just got stuck up in the tree. And those are called drays. And so if you look up and you see that cluster of leaves that just looks like a bunch of dead leaves, that's a squirrel dray. And our tree squirrels make those to live in over the winter and even in the summer. But it's very important in the winter because it helps them huddle together to stay warm. And on the outside, it's going to look just like leaves. But on the inside, it's going to have grasses and sticks and other materials that they've put in to help keep it nice and cozy. And then there's even gonna be mud in it. So that way it's nice and secure. And that way, if that tree, if that tree blows, the wind blows and it moves around that tree, it's not going to fall. It's going to be nice and secure. And on the inside, it's gonna be nice and cozy for our squirrel friends to stay warm during the winter. So I want you guys to put on your cozy clothes and I want you to come out to the forest. I want you guys to come out to Catoctin Mountain Park and see the beauty of the fall. And I want you guys to hopefully get out there with your observation eyes and see if you can spot a Catoctin critter. I'll see you next time. See you later.